Welcome to a Legendarium special about the Locky Eruption of 1783. In this episode, we will talk about a volcano that likely helped to start the French Revolution. Compounding a worsening climate at the time, a June 8th, 1783 eruption in Lockie, Iceland, literally made the world tremble. Over the next eight months, the Lockie fissure spewed 120 million tons of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, about 3.7 quadrillion gallons of lava, enough to fill 330 foot deep valleys completely poured out of 135 fissures and craters near the town of Klostor. Lava covered 965 square miles of land, including entire villages. Across northern Europe, a blood-colored sun barely showed through a thick and persistent haze. Pastor and self-taught naturalist Jan Stein Grimson described the unfolding disaster. The flood of fire flowed with the speed of a great swollen river with meltwater on a spring day. Great cliffs and slabs of rock were slept along, tumbling about like large whales swimming, red hot and glowing. Wind carried volcanic ash from the eruption and poisoned land and sea. Animals suddenly developed ridges and growths on their legs. Observers noted that they became bloated with swollen mouths. The severe fluoride intoxication caused by the ash killed half the Icelandic cattle population and a quarter of the sheep and horse population, a catastrophe for an agricultural society. Jan Stein Grimm and described the strange sickness as such. Those people who did not have enough older and undiseased supplies of food to last them through these times of pestilence also suffered great pain. Ridges, growths, and bristle appeared on their ribs, the backs of their hands, their feet, legs, and joints. Their bodies became bloated, the insides of their mouths and their gums swelled and cracked, causing excruciating pains and toothaches. In the months after the eruption, a strange haze covered the sky above Europe, making breathing hard. Millions of Europeans suffered from respiratory problems, headaches, and other health issues. As the ash and gases from the Lockie eruption entered the upper layers of the atmosphere, they absorbed moisture and sunlight, changing the climate for years to come. After a long spell of cooling, summer 1783 suddenly became the hottest on record. The unseasonably hot weather triggered severe thunderstorms with hailstones large enough to kill livestock. The scorching summer gave way to an equally extreme winter of terrible freezing. A warm spring followed, which rapidly melted the snow and caused terrible floods across the continent. These wild extremes defined weather patterns for years to come. Dry and blistering summers would be interspersed with terrible thunderstorms. In turn, they would be followed by deep winter freezes, snowstorms, and sub-zero temperatures. The fluctuations battered the French population, ruining crops, killing livestock, and creating an unbreakable cycle of hunger, poverty, stress, and hardship. Touring France in 1785, future United States President John Adams wrote, The country is a heap of ashes. Grass is scarcely to be seen, and all sorts of grain is short, thin, pale and feeble while the flax is quite dead. I pity this people from my soul. There is at this moment as little appearance of a change of weather as ever. King Louis XVI turned to men of science to control the crisis, namely Antoine Augustine Parmentier. During one of France's many wars with Prussia, Parmentier, then a surgeon serving with the French army, became a Prussian prisoner. In what men of the time regarded as a war crime, the Prussians forced Parmentier to eat nothing but potatoes. Medical science at the time judged potatoes fit only for livestock to eat, and that they would cause leprosy if eaten by human beings. However, Parmentier found potatoes to be nourishing and devoted the rest of his life to urging hunger-stricken Frenchmen to use the wonderful tubers. 
To encourage potato eating, made illegal in France since 1748, Parmentier hosted stylish dinners featuring the much maligned tuber. He invited celebrities like Benjamin Franklin and Antoine Lavoisier. Once Parmentier made a bouquet of flowers from potatoes and gave it to Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. These stunts won Parmentier the attention he needed, and the king granted Parmentier a vast plot of land at Sablon in 1781, which he turned into a potato patch. The prolific potato promoter hired heavily armed guards to make a great show of guarding the spuds. He hoped that people would notice the guards and assume the potatoes must be valuable. Anything so fiercely guarded had to be worth stealing, right? To that end, Parmentier's guards received orders to allow thieves to get away with stealing potatoes. If any enterprising thieves offered a bribe in exchange for the potatoes, the guards received instructions to take the bribe, no matter how large or small. Sure enough, before long, people began stealing Parmentier's potatoes. And in an age of widespread hunger, the royal government used potatoes to help fight starvation in northern France during 17 85. His great success earned him this compliment from Louis XVI, One day France will thank you for having found the bread for the poor. Unfortunately, Frenchmen would be slow to embrace the potato. While people on the verge of starvation would indeed eat potatoes, those who merely suffered hunger tended not to. And this made France another volcano, not one of fire and ash, but of discontent and anger, which would erupt in 1789 with terrible violence. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more press subscribe and if you've got anything to say let me know in the comments section thanks again for joining me and i hope that you have a great rest of the day